what does it say in the Bible that no one is good? Right. Yeah. Okay. Nobody is good. Man's heart is evil, is wicked. It is absolutely wicked. And, and when you are born again, when you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you got to overcome that first because salvation is of the heart. And what God does, when you can admit that you're wrong, then He's going to change your heart from evil to good. Because and I understand what Faber was saying when he was saying it's not me, but God in me. What happens is when you can see that you're no good and, and, and not be mad about it and not deny it and don't look for excuses for it, and God will cause you to repent and He will change your heart. Because good and evil cannot live in the same body. They can't live in the same spirit, in the same soul. And so, um, unless you, until you can admit that you're no good, you're never going to become good. And once you become good, you see that it's not you that's good, but you don't walk around thinking, I'm not, you know, I'm not good, or thinking I'm not bad. But you just kind of live it, and you know in your heart who you, you know, how you're living that way. The spirit that you're living from. You know, God said, just to add to that, God said, be still and know him. Know that I am God and not you. And that's why it's so important when this anger does come up inside of you, you can in that very moment be still and know him. Instead of judging yourself and judging others or, or you know, acting it out, if you could just find it in yourself to just be still and take it, then you shall be saved. You absolutely shall be saved. But if you go with the imagination that tells you or reminds you of your past and whoever did this to you, and you grab hold of that, you're not going to be saved because you're now playing God. And there's not but one God. And we can't save ourselves. I was, uh, this battle is a spiritual battle. And the more you let go, the more he will take over. But you got to be still in that moment to find what you're looking for. And that's the hardest thing to work with people to do. It's hard for them to be still and take it to overcome it because you're also dealing with the temptation of the deceiver. He's right there, too, to tell you why you're feeling this way and who is to blame for it. And if you don't recognize his voice, you tend to go along with it because it sounds like your voice. Look like you're reminding yourself that this is why I'm angry. And you never let it go. But you've got to stand still in the moment. That's why I, you know, I encourage you to, when you pray to get up in the morning and be still and know him. You don't have to be hooping and hollering and begging and whining. Just get up in the morning, be quiet, and let the truth catch up with you. Because what God is doing is separating you from your imagination so that when the tempter comes, so, you know, whatever the situation is, when it comes to tempt you to anger, you're able to see it and resist it. God said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But if you don't see the devil coming, how are you going to resist him? And the only way you don't see him coming is because you don't really recognize who he is. You really don't know who he is. And that's why you can't see him. But if you can know the difference between the two voices, then you would know the devil, the voice of the devil, and you can resist him. Then he'll flee from you, and you'll be okay in life. You got to recognize those voices. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I was going to say about anger is that um, we always have an excuse for it. And even when I was a little child, I'd like say eight, nine, and I get angry at my grandmother. Yeah. Um, even then, I'd feel so bad afterwards because yeah. I knew it, I just knew it was wrong, even though I felt she yeah. was wrong. That's right. But through the years growing up, I, I see that um, people, we, me, always have an excuse for anger. You know, like you said, my mother did this to me, or that man, he's supposed to be a man, but he's not doing this, yeah. and he did this to me or my sister, or that person, they talk that way. Excuse and we always, think, we always think there's an excuse, but the truth is, there is no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. You can tell, child. because of time, I'm sorry, sure. I, I got to wind down. You can tell the folks who have not found this straight and narrow path, because they have a life of excuses. Really. When you are living in darkness, you have excuses for everything. Excuses and they come just like that. Just a bucket of those excuses and they feel good while you're making them. You absolutely think you're right. And that's until you're unconscious 
and you're living in the darkness of your imagination instead of walking in the light. The straight and narrow path, and, and, and some of the things you guys said about it, maybe said about it today, is absolutely true. But I really want you to find it so you can definitely recognize it and know it. Because once you realize what that is, you're going to be fine. The, the, the broad road that leads to destruction is in imagination. It's when you live in time. When you're living in the past or you're living in the future. And, 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 and when you live that way, every decision you make, everything you do is absolutely wrong. You believe lies because they seem like truth. You, you make decisions based on how you, what you think and feel. And it leads to destruction. You got your family in the wrong way. And it's all because you're living in your imagination. It's because you're caught up with time. You're not in the presence of God. You're not in the now. Because if you live in the now, the straight and narrow path is uh, living in the now, the right now. Where there, there are no decisions to make. There is no time. There is no path. There is no, no past. And there is no future. All you have is right now. That's why God said He wants us to become one mind with Him. We should have the mind of God. And when you're born again, when you're entering into the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have the mind of God. But when you're not born again, you have the mind of the deceiver. And this voice, this thing that has made a home inside of you, that sounds like you, but it's not you. And it's always, it keeps you busy making decisions in life. You're judging yourself and others. You're worried about tomorrow. You're not content with anything. You're not happy with anybody. You know, you let you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. You're worried about the past and then you think tomorrow is going to be better. Yes. That's not that's that road that leads to destruction. And so when you have other wicked men and women who are coming along to teach you, whether it's a friend or an enemy, it's easy for them to make you believe a lie. Like this Jeremiah Wright Jr. person, this preacher out of Chicago. People who are living in the presence of God and being guided by Him, they see that that's wrong. They see that that's a lie. They see that that's evil. It's not even up for debate. But if you are angry, resentful, and you're of your father the devil, then this man feed on that and make you believe it. Because that's, that's what's in you, and it needs that type of lie in order to survive. It have to have lies. It can't live off the truth. And so you must be born again so you can separate from the voice of the devil, the voice of evil. And again, the voice of evil, especially for those in computer land out there, the voice of evil sounds like your voice. It sounds like you, it sounds like mama or daddy or whomever. But it's all lies, it's not true. So that straight and narrow path is when you can live in the presence, in the now. Not thinking about tomorrow or worried about yesterday or anything. Not worried about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, who you're going to marry, who you're not going to marry. That straight and narrow path is right in the presence right now. It's not in your imagination. And when you live in your imagination, you live that broad road of destruction. And everything you do is wrong. It never brings peace. Another thing about the peace thing, when you live in the in the straight and narrow path, when you're taking that straight and narrow path, you have perfect peace along the way. You have peace. You have the peace of God in your heart. And you want for nothing. Yet you have stuff coming in that you need to work with and you know, food to eat. But you want for nothing because you have peace. That straight and narrow path is in the presence of God. And I've never been told that by a preacher before in my life. They have preached about the straight and narrow path. They talk about it. They read about it in the Bible. But they have never said what it was. And so I'm thinking, oh, if I can just do the right thing, if I can be right, I'm on the straight and narrow path. And that's not true. Of yourself, you can do nothing. You just need to be aware. You need to walk in the light. Come out of the darkness of your imagination and walk in the light. And the Bible talks about that. Jesus is the light. He is the way. He's just, you know, he's out of light. He's what we walk by. And when you're truly finding him, you're going to be on that straight and narrow path. And I have to tell you, there is nothing like it. I was just thinking this morning, it's amazing how my life is changing simply by me observing it. Observing the not me. 
And that's another point I want to make. You're not, when I say watch yourself and know yourself, you're not necessarily, and I, and I heard a lot today, you're not looking at kill the dog. <laughs> Talking about you. Even the dog is shot. <laughs> Urban, go shoot the dog. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, when you, see, I have to say this because the mind, the devil is constantly working on your mind to define everything. So when I say know yourself, I'm really saying to know the not you. Really. The, the, the person that, this spirit has made a home inside of you that is not you. That's who you need to become familiar with. And when you sit still and know God, be still and know Him, He takes you away from the not you because people think that what they think, what they feel, how they act, and this voice that talks to them, they think that that's them. But that's the thing you want to become aware of and just observe that and life is changing. The real you is starting to develop. You understand that? Yes. Anybody don't understand it? You need to really observe the not you, the lie, the spirit, the sin that's made a home inside of you. And when you become aware of that, then you are fine. It's not like watching this physical it's self. It's, it, it's, watching that, it's watching that thing that's made a home in you that you're overcoming. And then you're guided by good. You're guided by God. Christ has already made it possible for us. All we have to do is be still and accept it. There's nothing else you can do about it. Sit quiet and when you pray and accept it. And then it will come to pass. That makes sense? Yes. Anybody have a question about it? I have a question because you yes. told me, you told us the congregation, that know thyself. Right. And I believe in knowing that self and is knowing God that's in me. That's right. Let me tell you about that because I'm telling you, you're absolutely right. See, when you see the not you, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna, you're gonna naturally know that this is God in me. But see, people think this thing that's made a home in them is God or is themselves. But when you're separated from the not you, you are present with God, and you see that it's not of yourself that these things are happening. That you are guided by Him. I just don't want people to focus on their physical, physical self, thinking that that's watching themselves. No, I know it's not me. Yeah. It's right. God. Yeah. Uh, any, any question about that? About you got to. That's why it's so important to sit still, so you can come out of your imagination. So as a man thinking, so as he is. So when you believe this lie, and not you, that's what you become, and it's impossible to believe the truth. That's why we have. And that that thing that's in you is your pride, your ego, the ego of your imagination, convincing you that you are God, and that of yourself you can do something. When in reality you can't. So you got to learn to let go and let him take over.